This channel is supported by my online fishing courses, and you can learn more and get significant discounts at saltstrong.com skinner. I'll have links to all of the gear in the video description, and if you like this video, please hit the like button, and if you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe. Okay, a lot of people have asked me how I get crab bait uh, for blackfish. Um, well, I buy green crabs from the tackle store most of the time. Uh, but this is how you can get some bait for free in some cases. Uh, these are Asian shore crabs that I'm going to be getting. And these are kind of interesting. They really didn't show up in the United States until around 1988. They came in through ships ballast and they are an invasive species and they have invaded. Um, they are all over the place. It's pretty high up, but it's an easy flipper. It should definitely be in here. Ready, go. These are all good baits. Okay, it's not a terrible idea to put it back. Oh, uh, he gets away, I guess. For the next time, or well, the next person. Okay, so the point is I'm pretty far from the water here. Um, all of this is good. Bet you that rock's good. But even if I go pretty high up the beach, it's going to be good. All right, so this is New York, uh, but from what I understand, these things are like in many rocky areas in the northeast at least, um, maybe beyond that. And it's best to do this near low tide so you have the, the widest range of options, but uh, as you'll see, you can get them pretty high up from the water as well. And they don't have to be flat. Crevicey stuff like this works well. Just need a place for the, the bucket. Once I move this, look at them all in there. It's hard to grab. Oh, that's a good size one. So you, you could never wipe yourself out of these things because you miss, like, at least I miss like 70% of them. Now look at them all. And these are all, oh, nice baits. So I find knee pads helpful for this. Also, just be careful. Uh, some of the stones can be really slippery. You could take a fall. Uh, yeah, you could hurt your back flipping rocks also. Okay, get ready. This one should be loaded. This is a flipper. Oh, this could be a flipper. If I can get this one, all right. So this one's gonna be loaded. Ready? Oh wow! Nice side. Grab what you can. Uh oh. This looks like an interesting one. A little high up, but probably gonna work. Ready? No. Wow. Crap. That's the best one yet. Oh, well, they can bite. Uh oh, okay. Maybe I'm gonna do like one more quit. And this is gonna be the one more. All right. Okay, here comes the 
the mother load. Ready, set, go. Oh. All right, this is it for the day here. Ow! Oh. Now the size of this one. Yeah, I'll put that one back. Oh. All right. So this is all solid bait. There's no waste. Um, you know, that's do a lot of fishing. It's a lot of jig drops there. And I don't know, maybe I was going for 20 minutes or so. Alright. Alright, so people normally think about using the crabs for blackfish, but uh, I'm going to go for sea bass, and here's why. Here was the motivator for doing this. This is a large spook plug, and <laughs> I'm going to be very surprised at what I catch here. <laughs> Holy crap. Yeah, so a large sea bass on a spook plug. And I saw somebody else get a nice one as well. I said, well, I don't like using soft baits off the beach because they just get demolished by tiny porgies and all kinds of stuff. So I said, well, let me go take the crabs down and uh, and try for sea bass. And you know, so here's how you do it. I, I just put two on a, a jig. This is a one ounce John Skinner blackfish porgy jig. And uh, yeah, this is, um, I'm not even making hard casts here. I can see a rock. I know you're not gonna be able to see it on the video, but there is one there um, just below the surface of the water. I think it's about 140 feet from where I'm standing because I measured it on Google Earth. And at the end of the video, I'll have a link over to uh, a previous video that shows how I use my phone to mark hidden boulders so I can do this kind of fishing. Okay, uh, not a sea bass, but a small blackfish, and this was filmed, uh, let's see, it was September 24th, and blackfish doesn't open in these waters until October 11th, so uh, I st still have a couple of weeks plus before the season opens, and these waters are warm, so I'm not really expecting I should be getting many blackfish yet, but uh, let's see what happens. All right, so when you toss a crab jig next to a rock, a lot of times you're feeling a lot of little bites immediately. You just kind of have to wait through those. Don't swing at those. You want to feel some good taps, and really, you want to feel the jig move away. And when you feel the jig move, then you bury the hook. Now, if you throw out and you don't get hit right away, move the jig because maybe it fell in a crevice. That's what you're seeing here. Um, yeah, it dropped in, in a crevice or something. I twitched it out of there, and now I'll get the hits. Ooh, this is a good one. Whoa. Yeah. Oh, it's just what I'm looking for. So our legal limit is 15 inches, and this one is 20 inches. This is a beauty. And uh, yes, I'm excited because it seems like it's definitely going to work. And 
you know, this is, uh, you know, the second fish is a nice sea bass, so I bled that out like I would on the boat. I've got an ice pack in that little soft canyon cooler bag, which is a beautiful thing, so it fits over your shoulder. You can walk down the beach with that, and uh, let's get some more. Okay, another blackfish, a little bigger than the other one. Uh, the legal limit when it opens for this area will be 16 inches. Uh, this one wouldn't quite make it, but uh, pretty encouraging to see the blackfish along the, the shore. Uh, and uh, all right, we'll keep at it. This is a pretty reasonably priced outfit that I'm using. This is a Tsunami Trophy 2. It's about 90 bucks. And the reel's a Pen Battle 3. Um, yeah, it works out fine for this, and there are links to all of this in the video description. Probably a keeper, but there we go. So it's worth noting how fast these hits come um, after the cast. You know, I, I can see where that rock is, um, putting those casts right next to the rock. And this is lock and load fishing, you know, as soon as that thing hits the bottom, there's something there. It's just a matter of getting the right bite and setting the hook. That's a keeper blackfish. Definitely out of season, but a keeper. All right, so this is very encouraging for um, the outlook for blackfish season because, like I said, this is warm water. These things really haven't moved in yet. Also, these are not the greatest conditions for this kind of fishing. I would definitely prefer that it be calmer, uh, but yeah, the forecast was not what it uh, was not that accurate and. Definitely a little breezy and choppy, but uh, I just need a short cast, get near the rock, and make contact with that one ounce jig, and it's working fine. Heavy, whatever it is. It really moves, whatever. A striperish. Another 
keeper blackfish. Uh, that's definitely a keeper. Wow, so that would have been a limit of blackfish. Uh, that shows tremendous potential uh, for when blackfish season opens. I also had 11 shorts, so 14 altogether. Never did get another sea bass. And I used the same one ounce SNS John Skinner blackfish porgy jig for the whole trip. Never even had to change the leader. All right, if you like this video, please hit the like button. And if you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe. Cuomo. Yep, I'm in New York. <laughs>